Today we're going to talk about porosity and permeability. Porosity is the space between grains uh, in ground. So if we take a look at these, we're going to imagine they're zoomed up really close, like sand, um, silt, and clay, which are different types of sediment. So if you look at this one, you can see the grains are really large. So this is like sand. The grains are large and the spaces between them are really large because you can't fit them together really well. If you look at this one, the grains are a little bit smaller. So this is more like silt. That also means the holes and the spaces between the grains are also smaller. So this is less porous than sand. Finally, if you look at this one, this is more like clay. The, the grains are really, really fine and the spaces between the grains are really small. So this is the least porous of these three types of sediment. The size, shape, and arrangement of the grains all affect the porosity. You've seen the size in these demonstrations here. But in terms of shape, round grains are more porous than square grains because the square grains fit together more nicely. If I hold the grains like this, you can see that there's less space between them than there was when we put them in the jar. Permeability is how connected the pores between grains are. This influences how quickly water can pass through different types of sediment. So if we look at my examples here, this first one is filled with gravel, some chunky rocks. Do you think this is porous or not very porous? compared to our grains that we were talking about before. So this sample is pretty porous. You can see there's lots of big gaps between all the different rocks. And the, the pores are pretty connected. You'll see that when we pour some water through it in a minute. What about this one? This is a, a tube full of sand. We talked about it in our examples. Do you think it's more porous or less porous than our gravel example? So this one is less porous than our grav example, but still pretty porous. There's lots of holes between all the grains. And this tube has a piece of pumice in it. So this is what a pump, piece of pumice looks like up close. It is an igneous rock. That means it was formed by a volcano and the rock cooled pretty quickly, but it left behind all these little bubbles, all these little holes in the rock. So this is pretty porous too. It's got lots of little holes in it. So now we can look at the permeability of all of these, whether or not all those pores are connected. So if we pour some water through, it should be able to travel from one pore into the next one. And that's what permeability is. So let's try the gravel example. You can see it comes out the bottom pretty quickly. So that means not only is it really porous, has lots of holes between the grains, but they're really connected, those pores, so the water can travel really quickly through them. Let's try the next one, the sand. It's less porous than the gravel. Do you think it's also less permeable? Do you think the water will travel through the sand at a slower rate than it did through the gravel? Let's wait and see. So you could see the water stayed on top for a lot longer. We got a little bit of a layer of water on top of the sand before it started going down. Now you can see it's just about to reach the bottom. Let's try some more water. <laughs> So the water traveled a lot more slowly through the sand than it did through the gravel. So it's still permeable, water can still travel through it, but it's less permeable than the gravel, just like it was less porous. The last one we have on the end here is our pumice. And uh, we saw that it had lots of little holes, so it's definitely porous. But watch what happens when we pour the water in. So even though the rock is full of holes, it's really porous, it's not permeable at all. The pores aren't connected and that means water can't get through. So it's not permeable. All right, we have one more tube left. This nice blue one here. 
you can't see what's inside anymore. So we're going to do a little test. I'm going to pour some water into the tube and based on how long it takes the water to come out of the bottom, I want you to try and figure out what's inside of this tube. There we go. What do you think? It took a little while. This one's full of sand, just like this too. Great job. Now that you've learned a little bit more about porosity and permeability, let's learn a little bit about groundwater. 